Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. We are still in Chapter 5, and today we're going to talk about the electron configurations and how they affect periodic properties and the five trends you need to know. So what are the five trends? Atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, ionic radius, and electronegativity, and we'll take them one at a time. So we'll start with atomic radius, and the definition seems more complicated than it needs to be, but here's how it's defined. Half the distance between the nuclei of two atoms in a homonuclear diatomic molecule. What? So here is chlorine, which is a diatomic molecule, and so we're talking about half the distance between the nuclei. And for comparison, here are some atoms and the size of their atomic radius, and it is measured in picometers. So carbon is 62 picometers, and nickel, iron, and chromium are all very close between 124 and 130 picometers. So what is the trend? As you travel down a group from top to bottom within a vertical column, which is a group, the atomic radius generally increases. Why? As you are going from row to row in the periodic table, each time you drop down a level, you're adding another entire principal energy level. And so number one, you're adding a layer, and number two, they're farther away from the nucleus. So now as you travel across a period, the atomic radius decreases. Now as you go across a row from left to right, atomic number is increasing. But if you're in the same row, you're not adding any new levels. So you're at the same principal energy level. So as you're adding electrons, you're also adding protons to the nucleus. And if you remember, the nucleus is tiny compared to the electron cloud. So the more protons that are in the nucleus, the more it acts like a stronger magnet. As you add protons, the magnet becomes stronger, and that increased pull pulls the electrons in closer. So what's actually happening is the increased nuclear charge is pulling the electrons in more strongly. So the trend is less pronounced the bigger the atom becomes. So the more um, energy levels that are added in, the more layers there are between the nucleus and the outermost electrons, and so they're shielded from the positive charge of the nucleus, and again, that effect causes things to get bigger. So the definition is that inner electrons help protect outer electrons from the effect of the nucleus. So now I put this in to point out to you, as you look at um, the S block on the periodic table here, and you go, for instance, from just one principal energy level, then you add a layer, and so you can see how that layering becomes until when you get down to the 7S part of the periodic table, you've got so many layers of energy levels at electron cloud, and you also are shielded from the nucleus, so you would expect from top to bottom things to get bigger. And then this is another uh, periodic table that shows the trend as you look at any particular column or group. You'll see from top to bottom the radii increase, and from left to right they decrease. So across, the reason they get smaller is increasing nuclear charge, and from top to bottom they get larger because of shielding. So let's talk a little bit about ions. Ions are charged atoms. Why are they charged? They have different numbers of electrons and protons. When you have the same number of protons and electrons, you're neutral. When you have different numbers, you're either going to be positive or negative. And remember, protons don't go anywhere. They're in the nucleus. Electrons can come and go. So cations are positively charged because they have less electrons than protons. They've lost electrons and anions are negatively charged, and they are negatively charged because they have gained electrons, so they have more electrons than protons. 
So let's talk briefly about ionization energy. So the ionization energy is defined as the energy needed to remove an electron from a neutral atom, thereby forming a positive ion. Now the first ionization energy refers to the energy that it takes to remove the first electron, and the second ionization energy is what energy is required to remove a second electron. So if you think about it, if losing one electron is beneficial, then it would have a low first ionization energy. But now to lose the second electron, since it's stable, it would be a higher ionization energy. And there is a table in your book on page 155 that I encourage you to look at. So as you travel down a group, so think about size. As you travel down a group, it's going to become easier and easier to remove electrons because they're farther from the nucleus. So as you travel from top to bottom within a group, the first ionization energy decreases. Again, the atoms are larger and the electrons are farther from the nucleus, so it's easier to remove an electron. As you travel across a period, and remember from left to right, the atoms are getting smaller, the radii decreases. So for representative elements, as you move across from left to right, the first ionization energy will increase because of the greater nuclear charge. So that means the electrons are held more tightly. So again, ionization energy, you can think of it as increasing up and increasing across. So now electron affinity is a little bit trickier to think about. Electron affinity is the energy change that accompanies the addition of an electron to a neutral atom forming a negative ion or anion. So most elements release energy when they gain an electron because it's giving them a more stable configuration. So that means that the value of electron affinity is a negative number. Energy released is negative. So if we look at this first case, we have fluorine adding an electron. And I'm pointing out this arrow because notice that energy is on the product side, so it's releasing energy. If it's releasing energy, that means the electron affinity is a negative number and it means it's a good thing. It, it's benefiting from gaining an electron. And if we look at beryllium, which normally forms a positive ion, and I'm going to again highlight where the arrow is. So you'll notice that energy is being added in order to get beryllium to accept an electron. Therefore, the electron affinity is a positive number, and that would not be beneficial. So as you travel down a group from top to bottom, electron affinities generally decrease. So the electron affinity becomes less negative or more positive. And again, the radius is bigger and the pull of the nucleus is not as strong to be able to add an electron, for it to be able to hold on to an electron. Noble gases do not attract any electrons, so they don't have an electron affinity. And remember that energy given off is a negative value. Now as you travel across a period, electron affinities generally increase. It's easier to add electrons, so the value becomes more negative. So because the radius is smaller and the pull of the nucleus is stronger, increased nuclear charge, it is more beneficial and easier to be able to grab an electron. So electron affinity increases up and across like ionization energy. So now let's talk about atomic radii, or excuse me, ionic radii. So positive ions are always smaller than the original atom because they lost electrons in the outer energy level. And so cations are smaller, and so if you think about sodium, if it loses an electron, you can see that the sodium ion is going to be smaller than the sodium atom. And here is a chart, and... Um, We'll spend some more time in class talking about this, but it's just showing the, uh, the difference between the ion and its uh, parent atom. 
Now, when we're talking about negative ions, they're always going to be larger than the original atom because negative ions have gained electrons with the same nuclear charge holding the atom together. So you haven't added anything to the nucleus, so you've got more electrons um, and the same nuclear charge as you had before. So they're going to be bigger. So here is a picture of a chlorine atom, and if you add electrons to it, it's going to be bigger. And again, more electrons being held by the same nuclear charge. So as you travel down a group, ionic radii increase with both cations and anions because the radius is getting larger as you add more energy levels. As you travel across a period, the ionic radii generally decrease in size because the radius is getting smaller due to increased nuclear charge. So same trend. And finally, electronegativity is the tendency for an atom to attract electrons to itself when it is combining chemically with another element. It's expressed on the Pauling electronegativity scale, and noble gases do not have electronegativity because they have stable electron configurations. So as you go down a group, electronegativity is going to decrease because of the pull of the nucleus being not as strong due to shielding. With transition metals, electronegativities and other properties are not quite as regular. And as you travel across a period, electronegativity increases because of increased nuclear charge as the radii decrease. So here are the periodic table of electronegativities. And just as you uh, might notice, fluorine is the baddest element on the periodic table. It has the strongest electronegativity. The least electronegative element on the periodic table would be exactly opposite to it, and that would be francium. So I'm just going to summarize for you the trends, ionization energy, electronegativity, and electron affinity increase from left to right, radius and metallic character decrease from left to right across a row, and then as far as top to bottom, uh, decreasing ionization and electronegativity and electron affinity from top to bottom, increasing atomic radius and electron uh, and metallic character. And so one more slide that just summarizes it that I will um, give you as a handout. So for now, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.